Carnegie Mellon has a very distinguished history in brain research. Starting in the late 1950s, we had some of the most prominent people in the world that were starting the field of computer science and thinking about what we think of now as artificial intelligence. And so this really set the stage that became all the things we think of as modern brain research through the rest of the century and into the present day. The type of research going on here really builds upon the long tradition uh, that Carnegie Mellon has in technology and computation. Carnegie Mellon University has put together a brand new initiative, uh, which we call Brain Hub, to address the large challenges that are associated with understanding both the basic science associated with brain function, but also the relationship between brain function and various kinds of diseases, including autism, Alzheimer's disease, and Parkinson's disease. Brain Hub is an initiative that brings together uh, people across campus from disciplines as diverse as engineering and statistics to biology and psychology. And it's this multidisciplinary um, effort that I think is really going to enable us to make enormous progress in this area. My own personal research has to do with understanding the human visual system. And I've been interested not in how the eye works or how the early parts of the visual system work, but really how you take all that information that's streaming in constantly from your everyday experience and turn that into your experience about objects, scenes, people, faces, all the things that we actually think about and then we interact with all the time that really make up our visual world. When you open your eyes and you see the world laid out in front of you, how is it that the brain has constructed meaning and precision of the visual world so rapidly from the coarse information that it receives from the eye? The research that I do is to try and understand how this is achieved. What is it that the brain is doing? What are the mechanisms? What are the psychological, what are the neural mechanisms that give rise to this meaningful, coherent, unified perception with such rapidity? My current research involves investigating cellular ensembles that are engaged by sensory experience. And we're particularly interested in somatosensation because there's a very clear map for how sensory input um, drive cells in the, in the cerebral cortex. So there might be 20 different neuron types in the cerebral cortex. We'd like to be able to genetically label each one of those and see, develop a, a, a complete matrix for how individual types of cells are talking to each other. In order to do this, we're using machine learning tools, we're using molecular genetic te techniques, and we're um, working with uh, imaging and, and statistical resources here at the university. What we're doing in my research group is to try to understand how large populations of neurons work together uh, using novel statistical machine learning methods. And uh, particular questions that we're very interested in right now uh, involve learning. And uh, one of the tools that we're using to study learning is brain-computer interfaces. Hopefully, this knowledge will allow us uh, to develop uh, systems to help people learn better, both for rehabilitation as well as, you know, for learning as we grow uh, in age. Brain Hub is breaking onto the world stage um, in a number of ways, including through formal affiliations with a host of international partners and a number of local partners, including the University of Pittsburgh, with whom we've had a very long association. There are over 120 faculty members who are involved in some sort of brain research here in Pittsburgh, and everyone is within 10 minutes of walking distance from each other. And this creates a really vibrant community, and uh, I believe that this is one of the fastest growing and most exciting places to do brain research today. Carnegie Mellon is very serious about pursuing cutting-edge brain research and cutting-edge um, science in general, and in particular, taking the really special things about Carnegie Mellon, particularly our engineering and our computer science, and bringing them into how we study one of the most complex things in the known universe, the human brain. There is tremendous urgency for us right now to use these different methods, to use our expertise to understand the brain and its alteration so that we can really begin to address 
these diseases that we see in humans and bring about some kind of change for the good.